Lost Girl. So it has been almost a year since I first started making the videos, and you can tell because I'm back wearing footsie pajamas because it's cold. Now this is episode 14 of season 5 of Lost Girl. It is titled Follow the Yellow Trick Road. Let's do it. Oh my god, is this the Wizard of Oz? Like, they're totally doing Wizard of Oz? If they're doing Follow the Yellow Trick Road as Wizard of Oz, why wasn't Judgment Faye about Terminators? Dorothy's dress is blue, but whatever. Where means go. You've gotten that far in a car and you haven't noticed that no cars have drivers and no cars are moving? You could totally see the camera shadow in that car. Just saying. I was waiting for that. Trick's dead! And Tamsin's like full pregnant now. In every wide shot, Tamsin's not holding her belly. In every close shot, she is. And it's driving me nuts. Why is Bo not in Lauren's lab? Like, why is she in her own bed? Seems like it would have been less work to take Bo to the lab than all the lab equipment to Bo. What is going on? What is going on? Of course, Valkyrie pregnancies accelerate in rate because we're almost out of episodes. Can we please address how two women doing things got you pregnant in the first place? I mean, I get he was in her body, but it was still a lady's body. Apples are red. Cherries, red. Your outfit's red. Is anyone gonna call Kenzie? Because, you know, she should be there if Bo dies. Oh, Dyson's stupid son is back. Hades, Lord of the Underworld. Let's board a door. Maybe he won't get in. What the crap? Show, what are you doing? Oh, they're like, the show is almost over. We need to go out with a bang. Wizard of Oz. Are you aware that you're in a restricted military area? Let me guess. Oh, you're my God. Dyson. Like the vacuum thing. Finally, someone mentions it. The maestro's going to be trick, isn't it? <laughs> Speak for yourself. I'm in a daughter party, that shit. You won't <laughs> find the maestro without a guy. <laughs> Following the evidence train. Stick with what you know, right? You are the worst cop ever. Don't stick with what you know. Wait, so the moth bit her after Trick's funeral? Then why was she all catatonic before that? By spitting Bo's blood back into her own mouth. Ew. The maestro's gotta be either Jack or Trick. And I don't care. Lauren, why can I cure you? Because you're useless, Lauren. Calm down. Stop right Okay, why does she look like Helena from Orphan Black? Dude, if you're here for the kegger, I'm gonna need the secret password. What? Then I hate wine. Unless, of course, it's beer. Then it's not really wine. She's so true. Do you want to buy a didgeridoo? <laughs> I also have a didgeridoo for sale. Do you ever think like, oh shit, I forgot to put my pants on, but then you're like, no, I didn't, because you know they're on? Yes! Well, I have too many thoughts about what I should do. I am Lola. According to these books, this trick is transformation into human form can be accelerated. With the bug bomb. So we're going to get this moth lady to fork into Bo's mouth. How exactly? I'm going to hold her down until she does it. And punch her in the stomach. I'll get the no, just a bonfire. Start a bonfire in the living room. Now they have to solidify their romance. I don't care about Trick Son. And I love Vex, so this is just heartbreaking. Aw, Vex, I want to hug you. Brother's meant to be on the front, not me. Wait! Where is he? It's like Voldemort. I'm learning things. I'm reading Harry Potter, finally. I'm just excited, because at the end, you know she's going to wake up and go, And you were there? And you were there? And you were there? That whole scene was dumb. The mirror scene was dumb. Is the man behind the curtain Kenzie? Please tell me it's Kenzie. Oh no, it's just Bo. That's boring. There's no place like home. Kenzie! Someone, please. You're gonna let the moth out! Kenzie, don't move. There's a giant moth on your back. I need to turn it into a person so it can puke in Bo's mouth. Are you gonna hit the moth? I thought you needed it alive. I'm also kind of upset that Kinsey wasn't a character in Bo's dream. I mean, she was supposed to be a big part of her life. I assumed it was from you. Oh no, it's from Jack. Run. There we go. I knew she had to show up in your weird fever dream. This is getting creepy. I don't like it. Whoa, I don't like flying Kinsey. Wardrobe change. I do like the black outfit better. You have to accept it. She's gonna kiss her. The weirdest fight scene ever. To be fair, Kinsey looks pretty hot right now. Whoa, there's black coming out of her mouth. Never mind. Oh, they kissing! Shoot! Why is there a horse in the clubhouse? Get it out of there. Do the thing. Say you had a dream and they were all there. 
All right, you're not even gonna do the thing? The one famous Wizard of Oz waking up after the fever dream thing? This ring shall grant you freedom from claiming. Allowing you constant passage between the things. You couldn't give her that when you were still alive? How is Bo reading this crap and not crying? Reading someone's will after they're dead is a sad thing. You get a blanket. Boring. I leave my beloved bar. Sit down, Rihanna. Sweet, you got a bar out of the deal. You are my son, Dyson, now and forever. Mm -hmm. Please show Mark the way. Forget Mark. Use your blood to rewrite his death. You got Blood King Mojo in there. The dark mesmer. What's happening? Get out of there, Jack. I finally found a team that'll accept me. Aw. And you're getting your hand broken because of it. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. <gasps> we're done here, Lasker. We're, we're done here. No. No. You don't get to kill Bex. No. No, there's gotta be some magic fix it all at the end where Bo can just like write with her blood like Trick did and make it all better because no. <sighs> Ugh. This episode starts with Bo. It's black and white, Wizard of Oz, you know. She's in the clubhouse, it's empty, it's all grayscale. She like gets in her car to go drive somewhere and then she realizes that all the cars are empty and the town's empty and she makes the I'm not in Kansas anymore joke. So then it cuts to what's really happening and Bo is sitting in bed, Lauren's there, all the medical equipment's there, which again, why didn't they just take her to the freaking lab? Tamsin rolls up and she's like visibly pregnant. Dyson's like, buddy system, we're all like, watch out for Bo. Have you slept yet, Lauren? And she's like, nah. Have you slept? And they're like, nah. So then they decide to go somewhere while, while Tamsin watches Bo. Dyson's been carrying around Trick's will and he won't read it yet. So back in Bo's dream, she's in town. It's all empty. She runs into Tamsin, but it's not really Tamsin. It's this chick who's like a real estate developer named Thomasina. She says after the parapets happened, everyone cleared out, but she's still there. She's going to try and fix up a building to make it like a tower or something stupid like that. The Thomasina chick says she needs to find the maestro or something to that effect. I don't know. Then while Tamsin's watching Bo in bed, Lauren comes in and gives her like some prenatal vitamins or something. She mentions that Valkyrie pregnancies are accelerated in speed, which is just duh. There's like three episodes left in the series. It has to be accelerated or we won't get through the story. She's like, I don't know what you're going through, Tamsin, but you know, you gotta deal with it and you're not gonna be alone ever again. Then in Bo's weird dream, she's talking to Thomasina about, you know, being alone and having your heart broken and blah, blah, blah. And she's like, how do you know I don't like being alone? It's like, duh, no one really likes that all the time. Then Thomasina Chick is like, you have to find the red brick road or something. And she's like, okay, well, I know what red looks like. And she's thinking about red things. And then there's some flashes of her mom and Trick with red blood. And then all of a sudden they're like transported to this big empty field with a brick road. And it splits in, you know, in a fork, but then it illuminates red down the right path. As they start walking down the path, the whole world switches to color. Then as Tamsin is watching Bo, her tummy starts making some moves. And it's a really weird shot. Like, she stands up from the bed and comes, like, down towards the camera. And then calls Lauren, and Lauren fills her tummy and is like, the baby's moving, calm down. And then Tamsin's like, I'm having a baby. And then they move back to the bed because... Bo's machine's beeping and apparently she's starving to death. She needs like to feed or whatever. And then my least favorite character on all of the show shows up. Mark with Vex and they went and got Trick's books. Dyson's like, I told you not to leave the clubhouse. And they're like, well, maybe you could find some stuff in the books. And Dyson's like, I don't want to look at him. Trick's gone. I failed him. Vex is kind of like, suck it up and look at the freaking books, Dyson. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to make Trick undead if you don't look at the books. Then Bo and Thomasina, Tamsin chick, are in this wooded area. The signs are all switched around. And then Dyson rolls up, but he's like this really weird looking half werewolfy creature with prosthetics on his hands and face. And it's like Dyson never even looked like that when he was transforming. Like ever. He made like a little bit of a furrowed brow, but then he just turned into a freaking wolf. So what the heck is this dream she's having? He's like, I was in some army or something, and they moved on, and I stayed behind, and they're like, oh, you're a deserter. You're the cowardly lion of the story. 
So apparently he's like been hiding from the parapet, and then they're like, what's that sound? And then Bo's hearing tapping, like echoing in the forest. It's actually Dyson sitting by her bed, tapping his fingers, and he's talking to her, and he's like, what can I do to help you? Then it immediately cuts to something that feels almost like they cut a scene out. Because in the dream, Bo is wiping tears off of the wolfy Dyson's face, and he's saying that he can't do certain things. Clearly there was a scene of him crying that they cut out. He says he knows where the maestro is, and then they're like, okay, we're gonna go find him, and then they reverse psychology him into coming with them. He's like, I'll go help you, but you have to do it my way, and Bo's like, I've been waiting for you to say that forever. But just then Bo's hearing Dyson talking to her, and then Bo realizes that her friends know she's asleep and they can't wake her up. Then it cuts to into her bedroom. Dyson's talking to Bo, like, come on, wake up. Lauren walks in and says that there's toxins in Bo's system that she's never seen before and doesn't even know how to treat. Dyson's still down on himself, thinking that he failed Trick somehow and should have saved him. He's sniffing Bo's clothes and is like, what's this? There's something on her clothes. She was bitten by something. They think, oh, if something bit her, it must be the source of the toxins. And then Dyson's like, I have to figure out where it came from. And like, he picks up one of Trick's books. Now this is where it gets pretty dumb, because apparently in the book he finds that it's some moth that bit her, and they say that the moth must have come from Trick's funeral. So there's a big weird gap in time, because Bo was like non-responsive as soon as they found Trick. How much time has passed that they had a funeral for Trick, she got bit by a moth that came from the flowers, and now she's unresponsive. Like seriously. Was she unresponsive and then still got bit by a moth? Or was she okay enough to go to his funeral and then get bit by a moth? But if that was the case, wouldn't they be like, oh, she went into a coma after his funeral? Like, this is stupid. It's all the big misdirect kind of thing they did in the storyline where it was actually some weird, like, geisha ghost when they broke an urn digging Kinsey up. It's stupid and it makes no sense. Anyway, they figure out this moth that Tamsin has actually already seen needs to turn back into a human and vomit Bo's blood back into Bo's mouth to fix her. Then in Bo's dream, her, the Tamsin and Dyson versions, all wander across this weird elevator in the middle of a field. And also in this scene, you can totally see the outline of the big shade they put up on the grass. That stuff drives me crazy. As they're about to get in the elevator, Tamsin, Thomasina, Chick, makes a reference that if she was the maestro, she'd live in a penthouse too. Bo's like, crap. The maestro might be my dad. Either way, they get into the elevator and go down. Then back with Bo lying in the bed, Lauren's there talking about all the things she's tried and how brilliant she is, but she can't fix it and she can't cure Bo and she's all desperate. Then in Bo's dream, the elevator opens. They're all in the penthouse. There's this like potted plant of drugs on the coffee table. Bo has this weird flashback of when she like pulled the thing and opened the curtain and saw her mom and Trick and she's like, we need to go. Okay, and let me be clear, usually when they have the actors playing different characters, I'm, like, uncomfortable. Like with the Hell Shoe, when there were all different people. This episode is not an exception, it's still very weird. But Lola is someone that I would actually hang out with, and I, I swear I know people like, and I'm kind of like. It's the Lauren character, who is just this pothead, but also just someone that I'd probably hang out with because she has beanbag chairs. Lola's like, I have so much stuff going on in my head, I like to eat pot brownies to make it all quiet down. Apparently Lola's supposed to have the map to find the maestro, but then Bo realizes the map is in her head, she's just been doing a lot of pot, it's kind of foggy up there. So she's like, come on, Lola, think, you have the map. And Lola's like, alright, I do have the map. Then it cuts to Lauren at the clubhouse telling them that she figured out that they can accelerate the moth turning into a human, then just hold her down and make her puke in Bo's mouth. They're like, good for you, Lauren, you're doing all magic over science. So they're like, okay, let's turn off all the lights and try to draw this moth to like the light of a flashlight. And then they have a scene with Mark that I don't care about, but Vex is in, so I kind of do care about. Mark's talking about like what's gonna happen now that there's no Ash, but then he asks Vex, do you feel sorry for all the things you've done? And Vex is like, yeah, I really freaking do. And it's a really sad moment because Vex is so cute and so sweet. And during that scene, Mark makes some reference of, like, Vex being two-faced. And then, of course, cut to Bo's dream sequence. And Vex is there. And he's two-faced. It's this weird funhouse mirror thing. And Bo's stuck staring in a mirror. Vex's character is there. And he's two-faced. Literally face on each side, like, Voldemort status. One face wants to help them. One face doesn't. And he has to, like, fight. Then I guess they convinced him to help him, and then all the mirrors shatter. It was really stupid. 
But I was like, I figured it all out. It's a reflection. Like, you're smart. You're brave. You're this. Wizard of Oz. And then she sees this tassel and she's like, I'm going to meet the man behind the curtain and pulls it. She walks into the doll and sees this hooded person sitting in the corner and she's like, oh, the maestro. That must be Trick. But then the hood drops and it's her. And then she has all this flashes like remembering Trick's dead. So then the hooded figure version of her is like, only when the master's gone can you become the master. And she's like, I'm not the master. I'm lost without Trick. And then her hooded version is like, well, because of you, your friends have found what they're looking for. Apparently because she did that, she gets granted home. And she's like, okay, I don't have a home without Trick. I don't know where my home is without him. Then it cuts to Tamsin and Dyson coming up in the attic with flashlights. They hear a sound. They're like, someone's trying to break in. And coming through the window is Kinsey. I love Kinsey. Kinsey's like, I heard about Aoife and Trick. I had to come. Why are there boards on the window? Why are you pregnant? And what aren't you guys telling me? As she's talking, the moth lands on her back. Dyson holds on to her, and Tamsin gets ready to just smack the crap out of the moth. Then it cuts to Lauren putting the moth in this little glass thing, and she's like, Kinsey, how did you know to come home now? Kinsey's like, I got this letter, and then Lauren's like, crap, it was Jack. Lauren's like, okay, look, the moth is not turning into a human, and we need it to, like, right now, because we need the blood, so I'm just gonna get this needle, I'm gonna suck Bo's blood out of the moth, and shoot it in her mouth. Then in Bo's dream, she wanders into the clubhouse, and she's all alone, and she's like, I don't want to be alone. She turns around and Kinsey's standing there with like really cool dark eye makeup and this white flowy dress. The dream Kinsey walks up and hugs her just as Lauren is getting the syringe and putting the blood back in Bo's mouth. Bo starts twitching and they're like, holy crap, is this supposed to happen? And Lauren's like, uh, I guess maybe that weird moth creature is transforming inside of Bo right now. Lauren doesn't seem to know what she's doing most of the time. So Bo's laying there twitching, and the Kinsey in her dream pulls back and starts just twitching herself and freaking out. She flies through the air and then comes back in a cool black flowing dress, and girl looks good. She starts flitting around, and then she's like, kiss me, Bo. Lauren's like, holy crap, we're losing her. And Dyson's like, maybe it's not just physical. Maybe she has to, like, want to accept this cure. So he starts yelling, accept it, Bo. Kinsey crawls on top of Bo and is like, accept it, Bo. And in her dream, she starts fighting this weird black dress Kinsey. Kinsey's flipping and doing all these acrobatic tricks. Bo really sucks at fighting. Bo falls down. Dream Kinsey lands on top of her. Bo's like, what do you want? And she's got these crazy eyes. And she's like, accept it, Bo. Bo's like, no. But then she starts hearing them in the real world being like, accept it, Bo. Then this weird black gunk starts coming out of Dream Kinsey's mouth. She leans down. Puts it in Bo's mouth and they start kissing and I'm upset by the whole thing. And then it gets weirder. In her dream, Bo stands up. Kinsey is now in the white flowing dress with a freaking horse. Bo's like, that's the purpose. I thought it was bad. I mean, it can't be bad. Clearly, it's a white horse. Dream Kinsey is like, you were bad before you became good. You have to take the reins. Here's a freaking horseshoe. She's like, find the Pyrapus. And Bo's like, I can't do it without Trick. I don't have the answers. And Dream Kinsey's like, the answers will come. Okay. Bo's hearing the voices of like Lauren Dyson and Kinsey in the real world wanting her to come back. Dream Kinsey's like, you'll know where to get the answers. They'll come. You hold the key. You're the one. Dream Kinsey's like, you have to accept it or everyone will perish. And she's like, no, I can't do it without him. And then Dream Kinsey's like, take the horseshoe. Goodbye. And then Bo says, goodbye, Trick. And then she wakes up in her bed. Bo sits up surrounded by all of them and she's like, he's gone. Trick is really gone. And then it cuts to them all like on her bed and in her room. And Dyson's like, here's the will. You should read it. Bo starts reading the will. And first of all, if you're reading the will of someone who just recently died, you'd be crying. Especially if you just came to terms with losing them. But she's like, okay, let me read. <clears throat> In the will, Trick leaves Kinsey a ring that makes it where she doesn't have to be claimed and she can pass in and out of the Fey world, which is like, you couldn't have given that to her earlier. He leaves Lauren all of his books on the occult because he's like, Lauren, science and magic, figure it out. He leaves Tams in a blanket. I don't think it's even magical or anything. It's just like a blanket, supposedly woven from the sky. How does one do that? He leaves Vex a compass because Vex has like found his way to the light. He leaves Dyson the doll, the bar, because Dyson is his lieutenant and like his son and it's very sweet. Except he left it to Dyson and Mark and wants him to like teach Mark and I don't care about Mark. But but to Dyson it's very sweet. 
He doesn't even leave anything for Bo. He leaves his gratitude and love and his heart. And I'm like, nice sentiment, but can't I have material things? She can't go on reading because apparently she's crying too much, but she wasn't even crying. So Kinsey reads the last bit and Bo finishes it because she knows that he wants to say that you're my blood too forever. And I'm hoping that means that she's gonna figure out that she can also write stuff in her own blood and fix all the crazy stuff that's happened. Fingers crossed. They all like hold hands, which is kind of weird. And then they look to Trick's photo, which says like in loving memory. And then comes the scene that makes me mad. Vex is going upstairs and he's like, hey Tamsin, you forgot your blanket, which is like, if she went in the other room, she doesn't need to carry the blanket. Why are you looking upstairs for her? Maybe she just went upstairs to sleep. Either way, he sees the windows open and Jack is there. I hate Jack. Jack's like, Trick gives you a compass and all of a sudden you're good. I mean, you could have really helped our side. You know what? You still can. Vex turns around, tries to mesmer him and he can't. Vex is like, I finally found a team that accepts me. And then Jack's like, well, can you give them a message? Vex is all snarky, like, I'll get my memo pad. And Jack's like, this will be self-explanatory. And then he slits Vex's throat. Oh my gosh. He is the lord of the underworld and he's slitting throats. That's so old school and boring and messed up. I mean, it seems overly simplistic for someone who's like Lord of the Underworld, but it's effective. Anyway, Vex falls to the carpet, starts holding his throat, bleeding everywhere, and then Jack just walks off in the background, and then the freaking credits roll. I'm really, really hoping, seeing that Bo is special because she got powers from her mom and her dad, which no one else can do that. You have to have both fake parents and you only get power from one of them. She's special and can get both. Maybe she's got the power to like change things with her blood and I'm hoping that's going to be the case. I'm hoping all the crap can be rewritten. Trick and Vex won't be dead. Hell won't be dead. All that stuff. I don't know. We'll see. There's like two episodes left of the whole series. So I don't know. I'm upset. Give me a minute. So if I forgot anything or left anything out, if you guys just want to talk, because oh my gosh, I feel like I need like group therapy after this. Just drop a comment. Don't forget to do the things. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you guys later. I'm sad. Until next time.